Now, uh, defining performance. There are four uh, uh, graphs. There are four bar charts. Uh, so you can see which airplanes has the best performance. Obviously, uh, th this one uh, would be the uh, would be the best one. This one, uh, this one would be the best one. If you call, the, the, this uh, graph gives you the uh, summary of the uh, performance, and it gives that Boeing. Uh, 747 gives you the best performance if you compare uh, uh, passenger capacity, uh, cruising range and uh, cruising speed. If you compare, then you would see that Boeing 747 uh, would give you the best performance, which actually suggests that Boeing may not be, uh, may not have uh, like a uh, high cruising range or a uh, longest cruising range. Uh, or uh, 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 in this case, uh, uh, cru uh, cruising speed. But when we trade off some of the uh, uh, factors and we, we kind of summarize, uh, then we see considering all the available resources and factors, Boeing 747 would be our best choice. Now, what would be the response time and throughput? Response time. Response time uh, is how long it takes to do a task. So this is what response time. We are talking about CPU. When you when you are trying to execute something, uh, uh, then how long it takes to perform a task. Now throughput. Throughput is total work done per unit time. So it is a measurement of how the system is uh, perform, uh, performing. For example, if a system can, uh, let's say for, for a printer, if a printer can print 10 pages per minute, then the throughput of that uh, printer would be 10. So how are response time and throughput affected? Uh, uh, how, uh, how are response time and throughput affected by? Replacing processor with a faster version and adding more processor. Uh, so if we replace an existing processor with more faster faster version, uh, so if we replace existing processor with faster version, obviously response time will increase. Where well, um, I mean increase means there will be a, a quick response from the system. So if we have quick response, that means the throughput will increase. Also, we can have uh, more processors, which means we can add more ports to our processors. Now, relative performance. Defining, if we define a performance, then performance would be one over execution time. So, let's say X is N times faster than Y. What this means? This means that performance of X over performance of Y is equal to execution time of y over execution time of x this would give you n so let's see an example time taken to run a program 10 seconds let's say we have two systems uh, system a and system b so time taken to run a program on system a is 10 seconds and system b is 15 seconds so if we come up with the ratio then execution time of B over execution time of A is uh, 1.5. So A is 1.5 times faster than B. So thank you for watching. Uh, hope you will join in the next uh, segment. Thank you. Hi, uh, welcome to CSC 340 Computer Architecture Lecture Series. Now, in this slide, we have CPU time. What is CPU time? CPU time is the time CPU spends on a particular job or a program. As we all know that CPU in the queue, there are lots of jobs waiting to be processed. So, when the jobs are waiting in the queue, for uh, it is not CPU time. That time is not calculated when we, we uh, do calculate uh, CPU time. CPU time is the time that CPU only spends on the on a particular job. So time spent on pro uh, spent processing a given job. Now discounts, IO time, 
and other jobs share. Higher time jobs could be waiting for higher request. Jobs could be waiting for returns. Uh, so there, there could be a various waiting time. So when we are talking about CPU time, CPU time is only the time CPU actually working on a particular uh, program or a job without considering any other waiting time. So what it comprises? Comprises user CPU time and system CPU time. What is user CPU time? User CPU time is the when CPU is actually executing the user program. And what is CPU uh, system CPU time? System CPU time is when CPU is working with the operating system for that particular program, which means in the system CPU time, CPU actually working with the operating system, not the, uh, and, and, and uh, user CPU time is when the CPU is working with the user program. Now, different programs are affected differently by CPU and system performance. CPU clocking. Digital hardware is governed by constant clock rate. When we are discussing about clock rate, there are two things associated with clock rate. One is clock uh, period and the other one is clock cycle. So what is clock period? Clock period is this part is this part is clock period. So the duration of this part is clock period. Now clock frequency uh, is uh, cycles per second so how many of this this period can is there uh, per second how many times this period occurs is your clock frequency now cpu time so uh, how can we calculate the cpu time you already know what is cpu time cpu time is the time that cpu spends on a particular program the total time CPU spends on a particular program except any kind of waiting time. So what could be the equation for CPU time? CPU time is CPU clock cycle. So what is the clock of your system and clock cycle time? That means uh, uh, what, uh, CPU clock cycle, sorry, CPU clock cycle is how many clock cycle you need and then clock cycle time. What is the duration of each clock cycle, which we can write CPU clock cycle over clock rate because 1 over clock rate is clock cycle time. So uh, for improving the performance, what we can do? We can reduce number of clock cycles. Let's say uh, we have a clock cycle something like this. Let's say this is this is one clock cycle. Now, uh, so let's say we 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 make necessary changes in our program. What that gives is uh, let's say the, uh, we make necessary changes of a uh, changes in a program, and what that gives us is initially the program may need like ten cycle uh, like this, but after making those changes. The program might need let's say seven cycles so you, you could read in the second uh, if, you, if your program end up uh, uh, needing seven cycle that means you, you you manage to improve the performance or increase the clock rate now increase the clock rate means you will have more periods in a, a, a per second which means you reduce the period length which means uh, the duration of uh, a period now a hardware designer must offer trade-off clock rate against cycle count so there is a trade-off when you are reducing the uh, period time so that there uh, there has to be some kind of trade-off because uh, your all your hardware has to or have uh, all your hardware have to support the clock uh, clock cycle that, or clock rate that you are you are uh, trying to come up with now let's say we have a computer a which runs on 2 gigahertz uh, clock and a program runs uh, on 10 seconds uh, see the program gives 10 second cpu times now let's say we would like to design computer b for the same program our objective that the program would give us a cpu time of a cpu time of 6 seconds now 
designer have figured out that the uh, that it is possible to uh, like work in the increase the clock rate it is possible to increase the clock rate but in increasing the clock rate would uh, give, uh, give uh, would end up in a situation where uh, 1.2 times a clock cycle more clock cycle would be required for some of the components which means the components that were required one clock cycle now would require 1.2 times of a, a clock cycle uh, because of the changes that's why it says that uh, uh, this line that's why it's, it says that one point this one 1.2 times as many clock cycle as computer a so what the summary is it is possible to come up with a design where cpu time would be six seconds but to do that the changes would force components to require 1.2 times as many clock cycle as computer a now let's calculate then uh, what would be the clock cycle for uh, the uh, or clock rate uh, for the new uh, computer which is computer b so clock rate is clock rate for b would be clock cycle of b clock cycle of b as you can see here clock cycle of b over cpu time of b so what is the clock cycle of b it's 1.2 times as i as we said uh, previously that it would be 1.2 times into clock cycle of original clock cycle which is clock cycle of a and now cpu time what is our objective or what is our goal for cpu time it's six uh, six seconds our, our goal is six seconds so this is what uh, we have now now clock cycle of a that's straightforward it's cpu time of a and clock cycle clock rate of a now initially uh, the our cpu time was 10 seconds and now our our uh, clock rate was 2 gigahertz so we just we just put the value here now clock rate of b then uh, we we need this value so you just put all those in this this case and then you get that the uh, clock rate for to achieve 6 second cpu we need uh, at, at, at uh, six seconds of CPU time, we need a CPU which uh, will have a clock of four gigahertz. 